Hello there friends, subscribers and colleagues. Welcome back to another edition of Readings and Impact Investing. This is a new podcast which is intended to uh, make available in audio format important material from the world of impact investing. And uh, we're going to be mostly doing reports, but we're starting off with some uh, lighter reading for more foundational uh, topics that are going to be discussed at length uh, later. My name is Daniel Rosehill, to introduce myself, and uh, this website, uh, the website for this podcast is readingsinimpact.org. Uh, this is a project to take that information about impact investing in reports and other documents and make them available in an audio format so that people can access them more conveniently wherever they are able to listen to something. So today we're going to uh, take a look at fossil fuel subsidies, and I'm going to be reading quickly a definition out of Wikipedia before moving on to a resource from the IMF uh, website, the International Monetary Fund. The only reason I'm doing the Wikipedia definition is because the IMF article doesn't uh, start with the definition, and I always like to start with a definition when I'm trying to explain a subject. So, fossil fuel subsidies, Wikipedia, accessed 1st of January 2024. Fossil fuel subsidies are energy subsidies on fossil fuels. They may be tax breaks on consumption, such as lower sales tax on natural gas for residential heating, or subsidies on production, such as tax breaks on exploration for oil. Or they may be free or cheap negative externalities, such as air pollution or climate change due to the burning of gasoline, diesel and jet fuel. Some fossil fuel subsidies are via electricity generation, such as subsidies for coal-fired power stations. Now, interestingly enough, actually, uh, when we're talking about externalities, this really dovetails with the work of impact accounting, whereby, as it says here, these uh, air pollution and climate change are basically uh, ex- considered traditionally to be externalities, and a large part of the work of impact accounting is being able to put a value on them, a monetary value on them, in a standardized, auditable, globally applicable way. Applicable way, um, and then they will be priced into accounting as negative impacts. Um, so it is true that currently these are uh, usually um, unaccounted for negative externalities and impact accounting, which I'm mentioning because this is a podcast is called Readings and Impact Investing is going to be aiming to change that. And that is the work being advanced by the International Foundation for Valuing Impacts, IFVI, in conjunction with the Value Balancing Alliance, the VBA. Okay, so now that we've got just that basic intro from Wikipedia, let's shift over to the IMF. Why do we care about fossil fuel subsidies? Subsidies are intended to protect consumers by keeping prices low, but they come at a substantial cost. Subsidies have sizable fiscal consequences, leading to higher taxes or borrowing or lower spending. They promote the inefficient allocation of an economy's resources, thereby hindering growth. They encourage pollution, thereby contributing to climate change and premature deaths from local air pollution. And they're not well targeted at the poor, they're mostly benefiting higher income households. Removing subsidies and using the revenue gain for better targeted social spending reductions in inefficient taxes and productive investments can promote sustainable and equitable outcomes. Fossil fuel subsidy removal would also reduce energy security concerns related to volatile fossil fuel supplies. Measuring fossil fuel subsidies. Subsidies are decomposed into explicit and implicit subsidies. Explicit subsidies occur when the retail price is below a fuel supply cost. For a non-tradable product such as electricity, The supply cost is the domestic production costs, inclusive of any costs to deliver the energy to the consumer, such as distribution costs and margins. In contrast, for an internationally tradable product such as oil, the supply cost is the opportunity cost of consuming the product domestically rather than selling it abroad, plus any costs to deliver the energy to the consumer. So let me just repeat that because it requires a little bit of thinking. In contrast, for an internationally tradable product like oil, The supply cost is the opportunity cost of consuming the product domestically rather than selling it abroad, as well as any cost to deliver the energy to the end consumer. Explicit subsidies also include direct support to producers such as accelerated depreciation, but these are relatively small. Implicit subsidies occur when the retail price fails to include external costs, inclusive of the standard consumption tax. External costs include contributions to climate change through greenhouse gas emissions, local health damages through the release of harmful local pollutants like fine particulates, 
and traffic congestion and accident externalities associated with the use of road fuels. Getting energy prices right involves reflecting on these adverse effects on society and prices and applying general consumption taxes when fuels are consumed by households. In the example below, and they have an example worked out in a graph here, the retail price for gasoline is 30 cents per litre, while the supply cost is 50 cents per litre, including VAT. Total external costs are 60 cents per litre, and the VAT rate in gasoline is equal to the standard rate of 14%. Thus, an explicit subsidy is 20 cents per litre, and the implicit subsidy is 75 cents per litre. And that is arises from 60, per, 60 cents in undercharging for external costs and 15 cents per litre due to the VAT base, including all social costs. If national consumption of gasoline is 100 million litres, then the total subsidy is $475 million, and that figure is derived from adding the $100 million and the $375 million to sum up the explicit and implicit subsidies. The below figures show the estimates of current and efficient fuel prices of major fuels from all the global, the group of 20 uh, countries and selected other countries in 2021-2022. The group of 20 is better known as the G20. Retail prices generally cover the supply costs, but rarely environmental costs, with the largest price gaps generally for coal, followed by diesel and gasoline. Coal has the largest external cost due to significant emissions of greenhouse gas and harmful local air pollutants, while road fuel use results in large congestion and accident costs. Natural gas is relatively less polluting, but also rarely taxed. Size of fossil fuel subsidies. Globally, fossil fuel subsidies were $7 trillion or 7.1% of GDP in 2022, reflecting a $2 trillion increase since 2020 due to government support from surging energy prices. Subsidies are expected to decline in the near term as energy price support policies is unwound and international prices fall, but then rise to $8.2 trillion by 2030 as the share of fuel consumption in emerging markets, where price gaps are generally larger, continues to climb. 18% of the 2022 subsidy reflects undercharging for supply costs, and 82% reflects undercharging for environmental costs and foregone consumption taxes, with the share of explicit falling to 8% by 2030. Underpricing for local air pollution costs and climate damages are the largest contributor to global fossil fuel subsidies, accounting for about 30% each followed by explicit subsidies at 18%, broader road transport externalities like congestion and road accidents, 17%, and foregone consumption tax revenue, 5%. Explicit subsidies are broadly found in the Middle East and North Africa, the MENA region, Europe, Commonwealth and Independent States, and East Asia and the Pacific, EAP. While total explicit plus implicit subsidies are predominantly in the EAP, East Asia and Pacific. Relative to regional GDP, however, total subsidies for Europe and North America are smallest at about 3%, while subsidies are 23% of global GDP in CIS and 19.10 and 10% respectively in MENA, South Asia and EAP. From 2020 to 2022, subsidies increased substantially in all regions except for North America. Impacts of subsidy reform Raising fuel prices to their fuel efficient levels reduces projected global fossil fuel CO2 emissions 43% below baseline levels in 2030, or 34% below the 2019 emissions. This reduction is in line with the 20 to 50% reduction in global GHDs below 2019 levels needed by 2030 to be on track with containing global warming to the Paris goal of 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius. Globally, around 60% of the CO2 reduction comes from reduced use of coal, while 30 and 10% respectively are from reductions in consumption of petroleum and natural gas. Removing only explicit subsidies reduces emissions to 5% below the baseline, while a partial price reform of having the gap between current and efficient prices reduces emissions by 31%. Full price reform raises revenues of $4.4 trillion, 3.6% of global GDP. In 2030, relative to baseline levels and accounting for revenue losses due to erosion of pre-existing fuel tax bases, revenue gains vary substantially across regions, largely mirroring the distribution of explicit and implicit subsidies. The revenues generated by full price reform in 121 EME in developing countries in 2030 would amount to $3 trillion, which is broadly in line with their additional spending needs for sustainable 
Development Goals, SDGs. A partial price reform results in about two thirds of the revenue gain. Reform efforts. In 2009, the G20 Advanced and Emerging Markets Economies called for a phase-out of inefficient fossil fuel subsidies in all countries and reaffirmed this again in 2012. At COPs 26 and 27 in 2021 and 2022 respectively, countries agreed to accelerate efforts to phase out inefficient fossil fuel subsidies. Several countries have succeeded in removing explicit subsidies and or phasing in taxes and other pricing measures to cover external costs. A few examples include the EU Emissions Trading Scheme, which forces power plants and industrial sources to pay for carbon emissions and had prices slightly above a warming target consistent carbon price in 2022. India, Morocco, Saudi Arabia and Ukraine that have phased out explicit subsidies and in some cases introduced taxes, and the numerous countries that tax road transportation use, which are over 160 around the globe. Still, many countries have had difficulty reforming subsidies despite the potential gains. When reforms are made, prices increase and this can lead to social unrest. The absence of public support for subsidy reform is in part due to a lack of confidence in government's ability to compensate the poor and middle class for the higher energy prices they face. Governments are also often concerned that higher energy prices will contribute to a higher rate of inflation and adversely affect their competitiveness. Subsidy reform can also be complex when it includes efforts to reduce inefficiencies and production costs, as is often the case for the electricity sector. Plan for reform. While there is no single recipe for a successful fuel subsidy reform, country experiences suggest that the following ingredients are needed. A comprehensive energy sector reform plan with clear long-term objectives with an analysis of the impact of reforms, transparent and extensive communication and consultation with stakeholders, including information on the size of subsidies and how they affect the government's budget, price increases that are phased in, and improving the efficiency in state-owned enterprises to reduce producer subsidies. Measures to protect the poor through targeted cash or near-cash transfers, or if this option is not feasible, a focus on existing targeted programs that can be expanded quickly, and institutional reforms that depoliticize energy pricing, such as the introduction of automatic pricing mechanisms. Thanks for listening to another edition of Readings and Impact Investing. This resource was from the International Monetary Fund. And if you'd like to get in touch with me for any reason, including suggesting reports for reading, please do feel free to contact me at public at Until next time, thanks for listening today.